Well, folks, it's 10 o'clock, and that means we are going to start the conversation on in case of emergency, break glass. Now, right now, there's a lot of uncertainty going on in the world. People are worried about this pandemic that, have, that has hit the entire globe, not just in our location, not just in our world. And one of the issues that Chris Carter and I have talked about, and this is Chris Carter, and I'm going to introduce her, is that people need reliable information and they need to be able to take concrete action. We all know that action is a way to get control of our fear and for many people this is just a wake-up call to get things done that we know we should have well put together maybe a while ago. Um, Chris and I have talked about this for uh, years and years and years about how important it is to get important life documents in order. And as some of you know, I spent about 26 years on active duty in the Navy. I was very fortunate to do that. And we in the military do have some things in place readiness wise to make sure that people are ready just in case. It falls into that just in case. And this is where the title of this program comes from. And that is the in case of emergency break glass. So I'd like to introduce my friends to my other friend. This is Chris Carter. She is an attorney. Hello, who hello. Yes, in estate planning. And right now, um, I'm fond of saying that when I finish a program like this, people run to Chris Carter. Um, and in this case, they are running virtually. Chris, tell us a little bit about how you got into the law practice and where you practiced before you moved to Colorado. Well, I um, started in Florida back in 1980 something. And so I've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, moved to Colorado in search of grandchildren. And uh, so I've been in Colorado since 2007. And I am an estate planning attorney here in Fort Collins, Colorado and Colorado Springs, Colorado. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's get into this. Many people don't plan for life documents because, and you and I have both seen this, if we make a will, we might die. People are worried that if they make a will, it will somehow accelerate the dying process. And we all know that's not really true. If you are over the age of 21, it's my personal opinion that you do need a will. But many people, Chris, they, they get a will done and maybe they do it, um, you know, right when they get married or when they have their first child, and then they don't think about it ever again. And they think a will is enough. Would you like to comment on that? Well, Mary, um, first off, 70% of Americans do not have any estate planning in place. So the ones that are 21 or starting their family that do put it in place, they're one up on everybody else. A will is a starting place, but it's not where you end. That is exactly right. And many people say, well, I don't care anyway, because I'll be dead. But that's <laughs> irresponsible and we've seen this too that first off you've got a much higher likelihood of being disabled than actually dying and the time to plan and the time to make your wishes known is not the time when you are lying in a hospital bed possibly in pain possibly drugged possibly um, incapacitated and Chris we've all seen the situation where people wait till there's a crisis and it's their own crisis before they take action so this is one of the reasons why this national pandemic is a good opportunity. I hate to use that term, good opportunity, but yeah. really it's a wake up call for some people to just get some paperwork in order. Can you comment on that? Well, Mary, it's really not about um, you. It's about the people you love. You do estate planning and you prepare for incapacity and or death because you don't want your loved ones to suffer any more than they're going to suffer by virtue of the disability, the incapacity, or the death. Um, and so estate planning is not about you. It's about caring for the people that are left behind to pick up the pieces and to keep them out of confusion, out of chaos, out of conflict, and out of court. Really, and it's out of court. And as and you've seen me do this as a live program, and I ask people, how many folks have ever, uh, for example, been divorced? And how many people think the court system is efficient, fast moving, and inexpensive? And pretty much nobody raises their hand. So uh, we say we don't care, but that's not the truth. And you and I were both here in Colorado when the fires ravaged both Mountain Shadow and Black Forest. And we all yes, know we people were. who have yeah, terrible, terrible time. And people had to leave their homes in sometimes just a few minutes. Some people were left with just what was in their car. Uh, 
And in terms of grabbing their important paperwork, this highlighted again the need for people to have their important paperwork all in one place, in a place that they could grab really quickly and run out of the house. And we all saw this and we also found out how many people are simply not prepared. And Mary, of course, coming from Florida, we have hurricane season every year, um, or earthquakes in other places, tsunamis. And so having that ability to grab what's important, knowing what's important, having it lined up is essential. I totally agree. And you know that you were one of the uh, big helps to me when I put together this manual that walks people through. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to organize legal and life documents. So really quickly, I just wanted to tell people where this came about. And I found that many of my friends simply did not have their paperwork in order. So I thought I would give them instructions thinking, oh, instructions would help. No, that did not help. And then I thought, well, maybe if I just make tabbed folders in a binder for them, that would help. No, that did not help. And so what we found out was people are okay if there's forms to fill in because then it takes away some of the onerous nature of getting all of this done. And this is where this started. So I always talk about the, go ahead. And Mary, you and I talked about this before. This is part of leading where people right now or when they're in trauma, there is a fog that settles in. And so a step-by-step -step plan, such as in case of emergency, they don't have to think about all the possibilities. You have focused and narrowed them in to what's important in a step-by-step -step plan. You're absolutely right. And the easier we can make this for people, the, the more likely it is that they're actually going to do it. So I always start with a letter of instruction. It does not require a lawyer. This is just, hey, in case something happens, this is what you need to know. And I encourage my people to think about a letter of instruction to somebody like me, somebody maybe they don't know very well. Maybe I don't know where your dog's food is. Maybe I don't know what school your kids go to. Maybe I don't know. Um, I know your mom is in a retirement home, but I don't know the address. And I don't, you know, I just know where is your mom. Does she have the the same last name as you, you need to put in the letter of instruction what somebody else would need to do and what they would need to know in case they had to step into your role. And that could be, hey, the spare house key is hidden in a rock that's in the backyard underneath, you know, the garden gnome or something like that. Who, do, who needs to know right away if there's a problem? Who needs to be called for help? Who needs to be called in to do that? So one of my favorite things is, and it starts very simple. It's a letter. It's dear Natalie, thank you for being my personal representative and caring for my dogs. And here's the information you need to know. So in terms of getting this available, this is Dolly. Um, Dolly, some people have a different trigger than others. If you've got a dog, you may think of, well, um, my friends will be able to take my dog. Well, wait a second. If something happens for you, the state thinks your dog is part of your property. So it may not go to the people you necessarily want to go to. And I start with the dogs because it's an easy way to get into things. So for the important aspects of our life, and I just start with the dog, is I've got a dog care information form and everybody's going to get access to this today as well. And the owner's name, the address, some things that people just would need to know if they were going to take over care of your dog, what that looks like. And we often think in an emergency, oh, my spouse, my partner, my family will be able to step in and take over for me, but that's not realistic. What if they're in the same bus that you're in when that bus gets hit? What if they're injured as well? What if they're out of state? What if they are like some of our friends right now trapped in a different country and unable to get back. You don't know. So you have to make it easy for somebody else to step in. Um, and I want to make sure to include cats because I don't want the cat people mad at me because, you know, that could happen. And then there's a cat care form and it's different from the dog care form because cats and dogs are different. And then some people are not going to be motivated by a cat or a dog because they don't have a cat or a dog. But you can use these forms if you have a gerbil, a turtle, um, a rabbit, um, whatever you have, you could alter this, of course. But then some people have adorable and cute children. And so if you've got children, you need one of these forms for each one of your adorable and cute children. So there's a child care information form. And it's got things like, what are they allergic to? Who is their doctor? What do they like for breakfast? What is their routine? Do they have favorite books or toys? These are all forms that is important to have on hand if, again, somebody who is a trusted friend is going to watch over your children until a family member or someone else can come in and take care of them. Now, Chris, what happens if you don't have your children delineated in a legal document? Well, Mary, I, we have something called the Children Protection Plan. 
and every parent needs to have the legal documents in place that say on an emergency basis right now if the police show up at your door and your children are there with somebody um, who the children go with because if you don't have that legally delineated the children will be placed in protective custody based just on a, a liability issue for the police they don't know who your next door neighbor is and that they're a sex offender they don't know if your next door neighbor's a cherished friend and so a legal document that validates who you want and under what circumstances both in an emergency and long term essential documents part of the estate planning for parents that's exactly right. So we've got to make sure we protect our children, but we also maybe want to take care of mom. So this is my mom, everybody. This is mom. And yes, I know exactly where I'm going. But let's say you're caring for um, maybe your parents or someone else. There's a senior care form. And for some of our seniors, and maybe this is an older spouse, we don't know, but some kind of you know, ability, what their medications are, what they need, uh, favorite foods, certain routines. This is really important, again, if somebody's going to walk into your life and just take over your life. So we want to make sure, again, we've got that child care form, one for each child, senior care form, pet care form, because everybody, every animal, everybody is different. And again, this all needs to be in one place that can be grabbed easily or sent to people really quickly, because we know that in times of emergency, we often don't have the time to sit down and write th these things out. And while it doesn't take that much time, it's still pretty important. Now, Chris, and Mary, not only in one place, but you have a binder, you have a package and so it's so easy to do the three hole punch keep everything in one place you grab one thing and you go that's exactly right and you know i'm fond of saying that if you're old enough to vote you you need a will you're old enough to have a will and you also want to list who other advisors you might want in case something happened to you but this includes getting together all of your financial information your legal information um, maybe your specific medical things uh, right now many many people's medical you might have one kind of coverage with one company and then other coverage somewhere else, as well as your finances. Many people have different bank accounts for their business. Maybe you came into a relationship and you had a bank account. Now we have a bank account. Now the kids have a bank account. Maybe you started your kids on an educational IRA. All of those things need to be compiled. Now, a few things that some people don't understand, Chris, is that even without a will, some property does get transferred and you need to know what those things are. And this is something again that I don't want to spend much time on because we've got a lot to cover, but certain things like joint tenancy versus tenancy in the entirety on property, certain things like an insurance policy passes directly to the beneficiary um, and certain retirement accounts. It's really, really important. And I, you know, I have some funny and fairly terrible stories about what happens when you don't have those beneficiaries defined, but this is really critical and this is in the checklist. But for and example, Mary, I've got to stop you there because- go ahead. I have to tell you from my personal experience, most people that come into my office, when I say on these accounts and different assets, who have you designated to take that property in the event of your death? They don't even know. And it That's may right. be somebody from their past. It could be their mother who's already deceased, or it could be an ex-spouse. Mm -hmm. People do not keep these things current. And so it's so important if you're planning to make sure that one, you have those documents in your possession mm -hmm. and they're current. That's exactly right. And you know that I talk, I, again, I have terrible, you know, funny stories about <coughs> the importance of updating your beneficiaries and making sure that you do that um, more often than you think. And that of course is in the, in case of emergency manual. But for example, some people don't realize that states have different rules when it comes time to whether or not you have a will. If you die in test state in say Wyoming and Maryland, well, let's say you're on your spouse number two. And let's say you've got grown children by your first relationship and you die and you've got a current spouse and maybe children by that spouse. Well, wait a second, your current spouse only gets half of all of your property and the other half goes to your grown children, which means your current spouse and your toddlers now have to sell that home because they have to now pay off your adult children if you don't have a will. Now that's just an example of how different it is in different states. So do you wanna speak on Colorado law? Well, Mary, the problem is that we have come up with blended families and uh, each state, Colorado law is just one state, we have 50 of them. And each state legislature makes their own plan 
um, in terms of what's going to happen based upon lineage and based upon X. And if you don't have a plan that you've made, you are going to default into these states where you live, the state where you live, their plan, and it may not be anything like what you want. It may not protect your minor children. It may not be what you want your loved ones to be dealt with upon your incapacity or death. Or really, we're here, we're talking about death, not incapacity. Right, that's exactly right. And we wanna make sure that that paperwork is in order because this is all about protecting the people we care about. And that makes sure that your retirement accounts, any kind of benefits you might be able to get, your social security, um, and any kind of other areas where your family might be eligible for some kind of payment is collected. And this is where you and I both know there is a lot of money that is not paid out every year simply because the family doesn't know where to go. And this also includes the real estate that you own where it is, if you've got renters, if you're paying rent, what that information is. In many cases, one person in the family handles the finance. And so they're the ones who pay the rent. And all of a sudden you go, oh wait, rent's due. I wonder who I pay on that. That's something that needs to be included. So any kind of real estate, the location, um, some, in some cases the actual address, if you own property, your spouse or partner may not know where that is or the address. You have to write all this out and make it clear. If you were ever in the military, including a copy of your DD-214 is also important because you are eligible for military veteran benefits when it comes time to burials. Having a copy of at least a social security number if you don't have the card and your health care cards because guess what? A lot of times people die in a healthcare system and that means making sure that the right healthcare insurance gets involved so that you're not impoverished by this. So really quickly, I do wanna to touch on the insurance policies. Many of us, when we first started a job at an organization, had an insurance company that covered our life benefits or long-term disability, short-term disability. Well, then a couple of years later, the company renegotiated with a different company to provide insurance policies. And then a couple of years later, it's a different company, different policies, but we're paying the same amount and we don't really pay attention to it. Well, then all of a sudden we die. And our spouse, our partner, our family calls up uh, the insurance company that we have written down when we first got hired and that number. And we call up that very nice insurance company and we say, hey, I've got this policy number. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, that policy number doesn't exist. And we're like, oh, okay. And we hang up the phone and we do not collect on the insurance policy that the deceased person has paid on for 30 or 40 years. And you and I both know this goes into the billions of dollars. So keeping your insurance policies updated in a place that other people can access again you know i love that binder idea is critically important to making sure this happens and it's not just life insurance in case you die it's also long-term health care uh, long-term disability short-term disability all of those things and long-term disability generally generally kicks in after 90 days and some people say well if i need that it's going to be 90 days um, but you have to, again, look at your specific financial situation. And um, I just want to let people know that uh, you probably need more, um, more, more conversation about this than less. And it's not just the insurance of death. It's also, you know, is your house insurance, your car insurance, maybe your boat insurance, your umbrella insurance, all kinds of different insurances that are maybe paid automatically. And if there's not money going into the bank account and now there's withdrawals made, you could be surprised. And it's not just automatic payments for insurance and mortgages. It's also things you don't even think about, like a magazine subscription for $2 a month. And you go to close out that account a couple months later, and all of a sudden you get slapped with a fine from your bank for $50 for a $2 subscription that you didn't even know you had. We also need to make sure that things like car payments are included in what we think about. Who is the car titled in? What names? And do you have to get the car retitled? And the answer, of course, is you kind of do. Some things like utilities are also on automatic payment for family budget situations. And if, that, if money is not being put into those accounts, again, you could be in a default situation. And in a crisis, it's just a lot to think about. And that's one of the other things, Chris, that you and I have both seen is that when people get into the situation, they are vulnerable. They're not operating on 100%. Maybe they're still having to go to work while they're dealing with everything else. It's a lot to deal with. So we Life have to becomes overwhelming. 
it's so overwhelming and you're already vulnerable and you're exhausted and you're not sleeping well and you're mostly miserable and now you've got all of these other details to contend with and it just gets really tough and you think oh gosh the cell phone how do i turn off the cell phone how do i turn off um, you know, maybe other, some people still have pagers. Uh, that surprised me. Some of my doctors say <laughs> they still have pagers. But we have all of this in one place. Well, and Mary, it, the other thing is also digital. We're oh, so yeah. digitally oriented now and states have addressed this in terms of laws. And so your digital assets are important too. And mm -hmm. that's something new that we've thought about what, in the last five to 10 years. And that's it's right. just being refined. That's right. And think about all of the passwords that are automatic on your computer when you log in. Well, guess what? Nobody else can get into your computer because you're the only one who knew the password. And that's where all the finances are. So we've got to have a better way to put this together. Now, some people also think that they need powers of attorney for um, things like financial institutions. Sorry, most financial institutions want their own. But you and I have talked at length about powers of attorney. You want to speak to that? Well, a power of attorney is something that everybody needs and it's part of your estate plan, but your estate plan is much bigger than a power of attorney. A power of attorney allows somebody that you appoint, we call that an agent, to operate on your behalf in terms of your property and your financial matters. And so, yes, a, a general power of attorney that is durable, that lasts through your incapacity um, is important and you're right. Nowadays, it used to be we did a power of attorney and everybody accepted it. It's not that way anymore. Each financial institution wants their own power of attorney, and that's a whole nother problem. It is a whole nother problem because a lot of times people are, again, lying in that hospital bed, and now they think, oh gosh, I need a power of attorney. And uh, that power of attorney, as I'm fond of saying, expires when you do, so the time to do it is earlier, not later. Um, some people also want um, a DNR. You know, there's certain people who don't want to be resuscitated if they've already got a pre-existing condition or if, they're, if you're in a multi-organ failure situation. And what kind of end-of-life care do you want? I've told my audiences, and you've heard me say this, I want all the good drugs. That's when I want all the good stuff. I want lots of pain medication. I'm like, look, some of it's probably going to end my life a little bit earlier. I'm okay with that. But it's something you need to make sure that your family or whoever your decision-making people are know. Um, and Mary, this is separate and apart from the power of attorney that we talked about before. <clears throat> there is a healthcare power of attorney, a medical yes. power of attorney, sometimes called a proxy. It's where you appoint the person that is going to speak on your behalf when you can no longer speak for yourself. And the advanced healthcare directives, and they have a, a bunch of different names in different places, medical directives, um, they say what you want done in terms of life-saving processes and pain relief, antibiotics, nutrition, hydration, organ is, donation. Organ donation. This is a, a critical document, and this is part of the estate plan, and part of the 70% of Americans don't have this done. I know. And you know, I'm a big fan of trust. So many people say, well, I've got a will and that's enough. No, a will is about 8% of everything. And how I explain a trust is if you have a trust, essentially you fly through probate, you fly through things, uh, you don't have to get courts involved so much, and it is just a much easier process. And actually, Mary, I have to stop you because you don't fly through probate with a trust. You don't go, don't to, go probate to probate with probate. a trust. That's right. A That's will right. guarantees that, a, a will is instructions to the court of what you want. And That's so right. in order for those instructions to be given validity, you have to file a court case, you have to have a judge assigned, you have to have attorneys involved, and that means time and money. And in terms of our court system, Colorado is not bad, but we're looking at a probate that's going to take nine months at a minimum. In other states, the minimum is a, a year and a half, and it just goes on from there. So we're talking about time, money, and emotion uh, that your family's having to spend, whereas with a trust, it's an automatic process. You have already predetermined what's going to happen in event of incapacity. So a, a trump, a trust, really... Uh, is the gold standard in legal circles because it takes care of incapacity, it takes care of death, it takes care of your children, it takes care of all these things without the court system, the conflict, and the money and time involved. So I have to tell you, Chris, a lot of people push back when I say you really need a trust. I, I'm a huge fan of trust. And they say, well, a trust is going to be expensive. I'm like, wait a second. So let's say on the higher end, a trust is about how much is it? 
let's just say. Well, Mary, it depends on where you are in the country, but I would say that a trust is going to vary anywhere from between three to 3,000 on up because right. it depends upon how the layers you build in. Right. Um, right. Some people need a lot more layers than others, um, but a trust is something that does the job and does it well. Right, and so Chris, how I explain that is, let's say, let's just say on the high end, it's, it's four to $5,000. So then I say, so, and people say, well, I don't wanna spend that money, it seems really expensive. I'm like, well, a good estate planning attorney is gonna take that trust and have everything included in that entire trust and if you tried to do this individually, it would cost you more. Some people like, um, they don't want to use names, but there's uh, things that you can go online to get a will or a trust done. And what I tell people is any good attorney can can contest that and it is not going to be worth the paper it was written on or printed. Well, not on. even contest so, it, Mary. The thing is that you don't know what you don't know. That's right. And so when you're filling in boxes on a form, you don't understand the legal consequence of those boxes. And going back to a trust for a second, a trust takes care of, when you have a, a trust estate plan, it has encompassed within that your advanced healthcare directives, your medical proxy, your power of attorneys, it's all there in one bundle that your loved ones will just thank you for endlessly because it is gonna save them so much. Money, time, it's exactly and right. And you know, people say it's expensive, and I'm like, yeah, but think about how expensive it's going to be when you have to hire a lawyer to represent you in court for 18 months. And let's say the average attorney fee, let's go on the low end of that is like $300 an hour, and you think it's gonna take less than 10 hours, you'd probably be wrong. So as and you know, Mary, one of the things I say now is, it used to be that trusts were for the Rockefellers and the Hiltons, mm -hmm. now trusts are for the smart people that That's know right. they're, want to protect their children and their loved ones. That's right. And part of this manual also includes, by the way, a, a, a section on why you need a trust and uh, explains the difference between a will and a trust. But then you got to remember also that you also want to make sure your family knows what you want for your memorial. And if you've got a, pre a prepaid plot or a prepaid casket or um, some kind of cemetery preference, do you have a preference versus Cremation versus burial. Do you have a spiritual advisor? Are there are certain songs you want. Do you want military honors? This all needs to be there. And as you know, I've said, it's kind of like planning a wedding, but you don't get a year to do it. You get three to five or, or 10 days to do this. You don't have the time. It's a lot of the same people, just not as good gifts. It's kind of a bummer. So we want to make sure that if you want a reception and your memorial, where do you want it? Do you want a menu choice? Um, I'm here to tell you, and all my friends know, I want an open bar. I want all my friends to have a really good time. Entertainment would be lovely. It should be your last best party. And some of the other important papers that we want to include, and again, this is in the manual, is your marriage license, maybe divorce papers, however many times you've done that, separation agreements, death certificates of your own parents, because you might need those. And by the way, you need more death certificates than you thought you did. I like to use 25, but again, your situation could vary. And any adoption papers for any situation that might apply to you, you also need to include your employment. Um, right now, a lot of people say, well, my, my spouse works at this organization. Well, do you know who their HR director is? No. Do you know their boss's last name? No. If you can't get into your partner's cell phone, do you know how to even call them? No. What about their business partner? No. You have to articulate all of this. And you have to write out who you want called, what family member needs to be called first, who your representative is, articulate this out. So one of my friends named Deb, she said, when I first started doing this, she said, I need to be able to talk to my mom about this. So I went into a studio and I recorded me talking to Deb's mom about all of this because um, parents out there, you think your kids know what you want. We don't know what you want. You need to talk to us about this. And then right now, as you already said, the digital age brings in all of these things, our computers, our emails, some bills, email accounts, and all of that needs to be considered. So this is just a quick introduction of what to walk through. Um, this is, Chris, this is your information because you have gone virtual. We have gone virtual, plans. yes. You totally have. And I want to leave this up for people who have registered. You will get a replay of this and uh, the slides as well. But this is how you get hold of Chris in case you've got questions. And Chris, aren't you offering just a a free consult with people on this? I do. You can go on my website and you can schedule a 15 minute consult so we can talk about your situation, where you are, what you need to do, and what's best for your family.
That's right. And you and I are both um, on board with the idea that we want people to get this done. So people can get the checklist. This is just about four pages of the things we've talked about here, as well as, you know, after the funeral, what do you need to do? What contacts? So these are all on my website at productiveleaders.com and it's forward slash free. And that will take you to that senior care form, the child care form, the cat care, the dog care, a lot of those other forms that, and the four page checklist. Um, I had to put the in case of emergency break glass uh, manual on Amazon. But right now we want to make sure people are getting this done. And we found out that Amazon is now a little bit slower with some of the shipping. So if people do get that manual and they send my team the receipt, my team is going to send them the uh, electronic version of that, which is the fillable PDF. And that is a lot easier. To, it's easier to look at the book and work your way through, but we want people, Chris, to start doing this now. And I think that's critically important. So I'm going to leave that up there for just a second. And I think it's about 1030. So we are. And Mary, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for showing up, being the leader that you are, caring about the people around us and making a difference in people's lives. You are, Chris, you're just so kind. And I think it's just really important, especially now, to take control over what it is uh, we're doing and making sure that people feel as though they've got the resources necessary to get all of this done. So this is where I'm gonna stop the official recording. And I'm gonna, I, we might have some questions, but if you have jumped on and you're planning on 30 minutes, this is the place to stop. Um, I am going to get into, I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. I'm going to get back into this. And uh, Chris, I think you put your website there in the in the section box. We do yep. have a couple people um, here, and I'm just going to check for quick questions. And I don't see any questions, so there we are. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining Look us. Look forward today. to next week. Mary, what are you talking about? Next week is about leading through a crisis. And again, it's 30 minutes, uh, same, same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, we're just trying to help people get through this. I'll tune in. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.